Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So let us have a look at some of the applications which have already been attempted. These are not what can be done, but which what but what which has already been done and kind of order of extent of usage. So, the most fundamental and prevalent usage of airships is for advertisement or product promotion. So, you simply use the large size of the envelope to communicate a message or a brand and when it flies slowly, unobtrusively, you cannot but observe it. Airships flying uh, over uh, cities with messages or with logos have been found to be one of the most effective ways of producing, uh, promoting a brand. Uh, for example, the two famous uh, airships with that we all know about are the Goodyear airship or the Goodyear blimp as it is called and the Fuji film blimp. You will find small models of these hanging below uh, the you know outside the shops of many photographic uh, studios because they have promoted the brand to a large extent. So, all they do is simply fly all over the world at various places with the logo of the company. It is said that the Goodyear contract or the Fuji contract, I do not remember which one, has been a record breaking promotion which is continuing uninterrupted since early 70s using airships. It is one of the records for longest advertisement contract which has been renewed every year because of its global reach. Similarly, when you want to announce a new product or any other thing, you can use airships to promote it. The other application which has found favor at many places is aerial observation. This picture shows a company which used airships for aerial sightseeing over Las Vegas. Similarly, there are many cities, I know for example, San Francisco where airships are used to take tourists up and give them an aerial view of the city and the important sites. Tourism for transporting people in or from areas of uh, tourism importance, the most famous example of this is in Germany where there is a huge lake called as the Bodensee which is uh, a lake mass that borders Switzerland and Germany and airships are used for a 90 minute aerial sightseeing tour and it is said that this tour is already booked for the next one year. So, if you want to take a tour, you have to wait for a year or year and a half. There is so much of demand for this aerial sightseeing tour. One can use airships with the advanced imagery systems for sports events or for recording action as it takes place without too much disturbance to uh, the people below. And a new application that seems to have come become very popular nowadays is called as the corporate hospitality in which uh, a company or an organization hires an airship for a particular period of time and gives a joyride to its executives or its employees or whomever they want to promote. So, you just go up and have a nice meeting in the air for about 90 minutes. So, let us assume that sometime we will have a lecture on LPS systems above in the airship. <coughs> but then looking at some other very interesting uh, applications, there is one which stands out and that is called as the mine seeker or use of airships for removing mines. So, I have a very small film which shows what is happening here. As patrons of the Mind Seeker Foundation, my wife Akrasa Mashal and I 
take this opportunity to call upon the world business leaders and statesmen to support a new technology. Our quest to rid the world of landmines. Fifteen years. We are very privileged to get Brad Pitt on board as a patron and he's just accepted. Very good. Right on. We asked Brad as a big Hollywood movie star and a, and a caring man to join us as well. Absolutely, it's, a, it's an extraordinary technology. But right now there's something of 70 million landmines out there. People are being hurt daily. We're not really sure exactly where they are. And instead of the what has now become an antiquated technique of searching them out with metal detectors or dogs, this is a, an extraordinary technology that is able to monitor uh, hundreds of square meters a second and to find exactly where and what kind of landmines are, are there and uh, which will lead to a, a much quicker removal. So it's an extraordinary technology. Right now it's just sitting on a shelf and it needs to be put into action and that's why we're here. We as a group have decided we're going to get the funding. We have people standing by that will fund mine seekers and our equipment and our technology and getting the first vehicle actually in the air, floating in the air. Our goal is, I believe, to make six or seven of these and have them in various parts of the world. And if for any reason everything else fails, every hairdresser, every friend, probably half the flight people on Virgin Airlines, and everybody we know will make a contribution. But we are dedicated to getting this done, and we are very certain we have the financial means to be able to do that without relying on politics to get it done. But we need political help, obviously, once we're in the country with groups that will help remove them. Okay, so just a small clip that uh, explained how with imagination and planning and creativity, you can use airships for uh, interesting applications. In this case, for removal of mines, the picture on your right shows how instrumentation can be mounted on the airship for scanning for mines. And the picture on bottom left with the red peak shows you the results of scanning that was done using airship for locating the mines. The red peak indicates a return where the mine is expected to be located. So then people know exactly where the mine is. Now you can send equipment to remove the mine without the need to scan the whole landscape. This is one very interesting application. Uh, the other application which is very common is police surveillance or security surveillance. Many Olympic games have seen airships being used for uh, security and surveillance and there is a very interesting video which I would urge you to find and locate which shows an airship locating or identifying a person who carries a weapon into the car park of uh, the Olympic Games in Athens and by the time he parks the car and moves out the airship camera has identified that there is a weapon, informed the police and he is immediately apprehended even before he leaves the car park. Similarly, uh, in Olympic Games in Atlanta, before that they were used. And uh, recently I got a news article from one of my ex-students that airships are also being planned for the upcoming Tokyo Olympics. Let me show you a time-lapse video that shows you will see a small thing floating in the sky. This is a video which has been accelerated. So what you see is that there is an eye in the sky continuously moving around and observing what is happening below. And the beauty of this particular video is that it will cover the whole night and the airship will be able to do the monitoring without any break because it can go up for many, many, many hours. So slowly you will see that the ambient light will start receding and also you will see a slight change in the route which the airship takes while doing the surveillance. Some lights have come on now. This is completely in the dark and it continues and continues and continues till early morning. Okay, so what I say is 
that the applications are limited purely by your imagination and creativity. I want to share with you one very interesting application which was reported in a Bond movie. Okay. This is a clip from the film called A View to a Kill in which there is a uh, Registers. Well, perhaps a, a, a demonstration would convince you. I want no part of it, thank you. So this man is not happy with Zorin's hmm. plan. The rest of our discussion must, of course, be confidential. Would you wait outside? If you'd like me to, yes. Excuse me. Thank you. Mayday. I provide you with a drink. This way. James Bond stuff. Okay, so if you disagree with uh, what I say, and if you don't uh, agree with <coughs> what I say, which is the same thing, by the way, you know what will happen. <laughs> <laughs>